Are the Scriptures alone enough to teach a man everything he needs to know in order to be saved? Is the Bible sufficient to lead a man to eternal life? We continue our series today, Battle for the Bible, right now on Let the Bible Speak. From the Churches of Christ, Let the Bible Speak with Evangelist Kevin Presley. The Bible is under attack today on many fronts. But this war on the Word is not new. It began after God first spoke to man in the dawn of time in the Garden of Eden. It started when Satan asked Mother Eve, Hath God said? In other words, did God really say what you think He did? Does it even matter what God said? Why, here's a tree that can do all kinds of things for you, and God is withholding that knowledge. Why, surely you don't believe what God said. Surely there's more to it than what you've been told. And you know, Satan still plants that seed of doubt and skepticism into the hearts of men and women today. Last week, we began a series of studies that we are calling the Battle for the Bible. And we said that there are at least four fronts in this raging ideological and spiritual battle for the souls of men and the future of the church. And last week, we looked at the devil's attack on the credibility or the inspiration of the Scriptures. Multiplied millions of people who claim to believe in God and may even believe the Bible is a holy book. They don't believe what the Bible claims about its own authorship when you get right down to it. That is, that the Bible is a divinely inspired book, carefully written by men who were superintended and perfectly guided by the Spirit of God as they wrote. Now that has incredible consequences for how we look at the Bible, what we believe, how we worship, how we live, and ultimately where we'll spend eternity. You know, the fact is, if the Bible is not the inspired Word of God, then it cannot be trusted. Why? Well, because first of all, it would be human in origin. Second of all, because it claims to be the divinely inspired Word of God. And so, if it is not that, then its writers were either deluded or dishonest. Uh, because they claimed their words were the result of the Holy Spirit's guidance and careful revelation and inspiration. Now in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 16, Paul here says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. Now that, that means every Scripture is the breath of God or as God spoke it. And he goes on and says, And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Uh, in other words, it was given for these purposes and able to do what it was intended to do. And therefore we can live in the will of God because of what is provided for us within the Scriptures. But then look at verse 17. He says that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Well, what does that mean? Are the Scriptures sufficient? Or do we need something besides or in addition to them to know the truth and live righteously? Paul affirms, as we studied last week, that the Scriptures are credible. They came by inspiration of God. Now our question today is, are they sufficient? And we'll talk today about the battle for the Bible and its sufficiency. Why Satan wants you to believe that you need something beyond or instead of what is revealed in the pages of this book. Stay with us. I'll be back with that study in just a moment. The psalmist said, Through thy precepts I get understanding. The Bible is the revelation of God to man. And you simply can't live for God until you know something about the Word of God. And you may say, well, I want to read and study the Bible, but I don't know where to begin. I feel overwhelmed or I don't understand the Bible. I want to offer you a wonderful way to get acquainted with the Scriptures. You'll learn about some of the most basic and foundational teachings of God's Word and you'll get a better handle on how to read and approach and study the Bible as a whole. Won't you get in touch with us today and ask to be enrolled in the Bible Correspondence Course. It won't cost you a penny, and we'll mail the lessons to your home, and you take your time to read and study through the lessons. I think you'll be surprised how much you'll learn.
Solomon said, of the making of books, there is no end. The world is full of volumes and volumes that have been written about spirituality and Christianity. Uh, massive libraries are filled over and over with books about God, the Bible, the church, and about every religious matter that you can conceive of. Some of those books are informative and some of them are very resourceful. They're very helpful to us. But you know what's truly amazing is that all of those volumes were in some way or to some extent spawned from this one book. In other words, it was the revelation of this book that prompted the author, whether he's right or wrong, to write what he did. Now, in other words, many of those books are inspired by this book. And there is not one single one of those books that contains one single line of truth that is not taught within this book. And what that means is, as useful and helpful as some of those books may be, they won't lead you to God. Anything within them and them alone that teaches truth comes from this book. Because Jesus rightly said in His prayer to the Heavenly Father recorded in John 17 and verse 17, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now Paul tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 as we read a few moments ago that all scripture is given by inspiration. And that it is given to teach us, to reprove us, to correct us, and to instruct us in righteousness. And he says that the result of that is that through learning the Scriptures, a man can become perfect. And that word, when used in the Bible, doesn't mean sinless, it means complete. That a man can become complete and be equipped or furnished to every good work. Now notice Paul didn't say that the Word of God equips him to some good works. But he says to every good work. And what that means is if it is not furnished by the Scriptures, then it's not a good work. And that's a lesson that a multiplied millions of people in religion need to understand today. Now you know the Bible says in the parable of the sower in Matthew 13 and Luke chapter 8 that Satan works to take the Word of God out of a man's heart. Well this is surely one of the ways he does so, by undermining the sufficiency of the Scriptures. Now I have pointed out over and over and over again in our studies together that the Word of God will produce a Christian and a Christian only. But you know the sad divided state of Christendom tells us something about men's attitudes toward the Bible. My friend, the Bible alone does not result in hundreds of denominations and divided churches. It takes the Bible being diluted, perverted, or amended by the doctrines of men in order to produce the mess that we have in religion today. You see, the Bible doesn't divide Christians. The creeds of men divide men. But yet we see innumerable divisions in religion today, and it's in part because we're not beginning at the same starting point, and that is a respect for the inspiration, the authority, and the all-sufficiency of the Word of God. First of all, I'd like to suggest that there is a battle over the sufficiency of the Bible today when it comes to the work of the Holy Spirit in conversion and sanctification. Now, the Holy Spirit is not only the Spirit of the living God, He is vital to spiritual life. Uh, the fact is we would know nothing of the mind and the will of God if it were not for the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Spirit of God is the animating force of the church. And Paul very plainly said in Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 8, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And then in verse 14 he goes on to say, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So we're told that the Christian must be led by the Spirit of God in order to be a child of God. There, there's no debate about that for anybody who believes what the Bible says. The question is, how does the Holy Spirit lead us? How is a person led by the Spirit to a saving knowledge of Christ and to a life of sanctification? Is it by some intuition? Uh, is it an abstract process by which a person is led to the truth? Well, remember, the Spirit of God is the illuminating source of the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit guided the minds and pens of the apostles and prophets to reveal the Word of God to us. 
And, and so what that means is when I pick up and I read and understand and apply the Bible, I, I am reading what the Holy Spirit inspired men to write down, and thus I'm allowing the Holy Spirit through what He has revealed to transform me into the image of Christ. All Scripture is given by inspiration, Paul reminded us. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, beginning in verse 12, Paul says, Now we, speaking of the apostles of Christ, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Now Paul is telling us that the Spirit of God illumined the hearts of the apostles and guided them as they spoke the things that became the written New Testament. And you know we sometimes use a figure of speech called metonymy. And that's where we name one thing to suggest another. And, and one type of a metonymy is metonymy of cause for the effect. In other words, we name the cause of something to suggest the effect, or we name the effect, and in so doing, we suggest the cause. Now, you know, if the Spirit of God revealed the Word, then couldn't we say that when we follow the Word, that we're following the Spirit? If the Holy Spirit revealed God's will through the Word, then when we say we're following the Spirit, wouldn't that mean we're following the Word of the Spirit? Now that doesn't mean that the Word and the Spirit are the same. Absolutely they're not. The Spirit is a divine being. But you see, it means that one is the medium of the other. The Spirit spoke to the church through the Word, and the Word is the product of what the Spirit spoke. Now that simply means that if I want to be led by the Spirit of God, then I need to read and obey what the Spirit revealed to the apostles. Now, so many people think that well, the Bible only goes so far and that we must have an extra-biblical revelation of the Spirit. Or uh, they believe that the Bible is a mystery to us until uh, the Holy Spirit comes and personally performs a direct operation on the heart and in essence opens our understanding and interprets and applies it within our life. In other words, what they're saying is a person cannot understand and obey what the Holy Spirit originally revealed until that person receives an abstract personal operation of the Holy Spirit to help him understand the Word of God. Well, first of all, the Bible doesn't teach that. Uh, the fact is, if the Spirit gave the Word, uh, what sense does it make that the Spirit has to come back to explain the Word? Uh, and you know also what's necessary to understand the Scripture is an honest heart. That's what the Bible teaches in the parable of the sower. You know, second of all, consider this. Uh, what do you do with a situation where you have two people who both claim to be led by the Holy Spirit who come up with two contradictory things? Uh, there are people, for example, who claim that the Holy Spirit leads them to understand the Bible. And those people believe in a millennial reign of Jesus after a rapture and period of tribulation on the earth. That He's going to come and reign from the city of Jerusalem in a 1,000 year reign upon the earth. And yet you have others who also claim to be led by the Spirit who say that Jesus is reigning now in His kingdom from heaven, His spiritual kingdom. Well, which one is right? Well, you say the Bible is right. Well, that's right. The Bible settles the issue. That's correct. But friend, if we're individually and specially led by the Spirit to understand the Bible, my question is, which one of the people we've talked about is being led by the Spirit to a correct understanding? Uh, what about those who claim to be personally led by the Holy Spirit who believe that a Christian cannot fall from grace and be lost? But then you have others who say they're led by the Spirit, and they say the Christian can fall from grace and be lost. Which one is right? Well, friend, the Holy Spirit is right. And there's only one way to know what the Holy Spirit has said about any issue, and that is to read and study with an honest heart what the Spirit has already said within His Word. Now, as long as a person can claim the independent, abstract leading of the Holy Spirit in his knowledge of spiritual things, uh, please consider this. What's to keep someone else from making the same claim and affirming something opposite and attributing it to the Holy Spirit? Now, you see, in the apostolic era, divinely inspired men had the power to work signs and wonders. Why is that? Well, the Hebrew writer tells us in Hebrews chapter 2, beginning in verse 3, 
He says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? Listen now, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. In other words, as goes the claim, so must go the demonstration. And the Hebrew writer tells us that God bore these men who were speaking by the Spirit, being guided by the Spirit, that the Spirit bore them witness. How? By the working of miraculous signs. So, friend, if you're going to claim to be personally led by the Holy Spirit beyond what has already been revealed in the Scriptures, well, then you need to step up and prove it in the same way the apostles did, by healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, drinking poison, being bitten by snakes, and so on and so on. Well, today I don't need to perform a miracle to prove the truth. What I need to do is produce the book, chapter, and verse to prove the truth. The Holy Spirit has already spoken. The last will and testament of Jesus Christ has been revealed and written down. And the faith, according to Jude in Jude verse 3, has been once and for all delivered unto the saints. Now, the Apostle Peter gave us a wonderful confidence in 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 2, saying, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Notice he says, He hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Uh, we're not still waiting from guidance for heaven. It's already been provided. If we'll just open it and study it with a heart to believe and to obey it. But Satan's waged a great war against the sufficiency of the Scripture today by convincing people you can't read and understand the Bible. You have to have uh, some sort of an operation of the Holy Spirit that you really can't define. You just feel it. You just somehow know that the Holy Spirit has enlightened you and helped you to understand something. Well, you see, the problem with that is, first of all, the Bible doesn't teach it, and second of all, uh, it launches the Bible into all kinds of uncertainty and subjectivity. And you have all of these various people who all claim to be led by the Spirit who come up with all of these different and contradictory ideas. Surely it cannot be so. Second of all, there, though there is a Bible over the sufficiency uh, a, ba a battle, I should say, over the sufficiency of the Bible when it comes to the interpretations of men. Now what I mean by that is some people allege that the common person cannot rightly understand and apply the spiritual truths of the Bible uh, without the church hierarchy or clergy, as it is often called, explaining it to them. Now, this is where the catechism of the Roman Catholic Church comes in. That's why the Pope is looked at as infallible in religious matters and the sole arbiter of divine truth in the minds of millions of people. Uh, that's where human creeds are born, with men saying that in order for the church to be united in truth, why, there must be the intervention of a creed upon which we can unite. Well, again, the problem is, which creed do we unite upon? They all say something different. It's what makes them a creed. But they say the creed has to come from the Bible. Well, if men's creeds come only from the Bible, then why do you need the creeds? Do you remember what the Apostle Paul said to young Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, beginning in verse 14? He said, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. You see, the scriptures are able and sufficient to make us wise unto salvation. If you want to know what to do to be saved today, you don't have to wait for some special operation of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to have some church council to tell you what to do to be saved or set terms of admission into the Lord's kingdom. Friend, open your Bible, turn to the Gospels, then turn to the book of Acts and see where the Great Commission was fulfilled, where the Gospel was preached, and where men were saved. And you know if you'll do what they did, you can become what they became. The Scriptures are sufficient. And the list goes on. You know, today uh, we're told that the Bible alone just won't do. We're told that to bring the lost to Christ, that we need gimmicks and games and programs and philosophies. 
uh, that to do the work of Christ, that we have to be on the cutting edge and innovate and change with the times. The world today, you see, isn't looking for a faith. And here's the real problem. Here's where the battle for the sufficiency of the Bible is waged today. The world today is not looking for a faith that is revealed in the Word of God. It's looking for a faith that is derived through experience and emotion. But Paul tells us where saving faith comes from, and might I add, the only place where saving faith comes from. He said to the Romans, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Romans 10, 17. It doesn't come through the Word plus experience. It doesn't come through the Word plus a vision or a dream. It doesn't come through the Word plus a human creed. Faith in God comes solely through the Word of God that is heard by a good and honest heart. I want to remind you of a story that Jesus told about a careless rich man who died and went to hell. Jesus said in Luke chapter 16 that he was being tormented amid the flames of punishment. Now this man could well remember the reprobate life he'd lived on earth and he well remembered his loved ones who were still alive and living the same kind of lives. And he looked across that great divide and he saw Abraham and the beggar Lazarus and he had a desperate request. He said, please, Father Abraham, send someone back from the dead. Send Lazarus back to go warn my brothers not to come to this awful place. You remember what Abraham replied? He said, no, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Well, who were Moses and the prophets? The law and the prophets of the Old Testament, the Word of God. He says, Let them hear the Word of God. Let them believe what has already been preached. And if they won't listen to that, Abraham says nothing will save them. My friend, the Word is where it's at. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ our Savior to a lost and dying world. And Satan today, just like in the garden, says, Hath God said, don't you know that God didn't tell you everything there is to know about this tree? Surely you're not going to settle just for what God said back there. She believed him. She ate the forbidden fruit. And the human race was ruined. It's the age-old battle for the Bible and its sufficiency. Now, Lord willing, in our next study together, uh, we're going to look at the, the battle over the Bible's relevancy. And it's going to be an incredibly timely lesson. And so I don't want you to miss it. Be sure to join us for that next study. I'll be back with some other things to uh, tell you. Before we do, though, here's another song. The psalmist said, Through thy precepts I get understanding. The Bible is the revelation of God to man. And you simply can't live for God until you know something about the Word of God. 
And you may say, well, I want to read and study the Bible, but I don't know where to begin. I feel overwhelmed or I don't understand the Bible. I want to offer you a wonderful way to get acquainted with the Scriptures. You'll learn about some of the most basic and foundational teachings of God's Word, and you'll get a better handle on how to read and approach and study the Bible as a whole. Won't you get in touch with us today and ask to be enrolled in the Bible Correspondence Course. It won't cost you a penny, and we'll mail the lessons to your home, and you take your time to read and study through the lessons. I think you'll be surprised how much you'll learn. I hope you're enjoying our series, Battle for the Bible. And if you'd like a printed transcript of today's study on the sufficiency of the Scriptures, we'll be happy to send it to you. Simply request the sermon series, Battle for the Bible, and we'll get that to you free of charge right away. Don't forget to enroll in our Bible Correspondence course. And also check out our website, letthebiblespeak.tv. And do us a favor, share that website with other people. Also, give us a like on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the past broadcasts of Let the Bible Speak. I sure hope you'll plan to be with us next week, that you'll spread the word in the meantime about our time of Bible study together. And the good Lord willing, we'll meet you right back here, same time, same place, next week for Let the Bible Speak. Until then, may the Lord bless you. Let the Bible Speak is brought to you by your friends in the Churches of Christ.